Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Julie at Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. This is floss tube number 14. Um, just wanted to first start out by saying hi to Ginger at GG and Stitches. She has, I think she has four floss tubes up now. She started in February and um, I didn't even realize I don't know I, I had over I don't I don't go looking for new floss tubes I'm, I'm pretty bad about that so um, she had sent me a message on Instagram and she's like hey I have floss tube now like I'd love it if you'd go check it out and so I did and I really enjoyed her videos um, she has the cutest southern accent but also she has um, her daughter Natalie is um, doing sign language interpreting for her videos which is so cool um, and I think she's only like 16 and she signs beautifully so um, it's just go check her out GG and stitches definitely worth it worth a look um, and so I just want to say hi ginger and then also I want to let you guys know you know if you guys have floss tubes um, that you want me to check out just drop me a comment and say hey I love it if you check my channel out I would absolutely love to check it out um, like I said I've just I'm bad about like going and looking for new people to watch um, but I'm always happy to to check anybody out so if you've got a floss tube and I don't watch it which is kind of likely because I don't subscribe to like a ton of people um, just let me know I'll go watch um, or, you know, let me know of anybody that you really like and I'll go check them out too. So anyway, let's, uh, I think this is going to be a short video. I don't have a whole lot going on. Um, so let's start with, let me show you guys a, a fully finished object. So I already showed you last video, the, the finish. Um, and I actually went ahead and framed it. So this is, um, by the sampler girl. It's called Jane Austen to Eleanor's room I think is the title and I just popped it in a, a frame from Hobby Lobby nothing fancy you can see like that the the words are getting a little cut off on the end there it's a tight fit I thought the frame went with like the style of the pattern um, but I certainly might need to redo this at some point I like it it's just it's a little tight I'm gonna probably like you know put it up on the shelf or something for a couple days kind of live with it and then decide if it if I want to redo it or just I don't know I mean I'm not like sentimentally super attached to this to this piece it was like a two-day stitch and it's cute and I like it and whatever but I don't know if I want to <laughs> take a lot of time to try to reframe it so might just stay like this so there's that and then I have just a tiny bit of haul because you know I'm not shopping guys I I told you guys this I'm not so um I got my bead pack for my Marie Antoinette Chatelaine and I ordered this a while ago and it just came in so and I don't think it was very much. I think it was like maybe $30. I don't know. It wasn't like the most expensive. Um, you know, some of the Chatelaines, the bead packs are a lot more. So I'm gonna... I wonder if I even have that. Maybe I'll show you guys if I can find it. Oh, here it is. I haven't worked on it, but since I'm talking about it, might as well get it out, right? So here's where I am on that and this is definitely going to be one of the fastest Chatelaines to stitch. It's not um, very dense, the pattern. It has like a lot of open space. Here's like a really terrible kind of idea but I've got that whole blue center done and then you know this is all like kind of spread out. It's not really dense so I do think it'll stitch pretty fast and that's why I went ahead and got the beads because I thought you know you know what is probably wishful thinking I'm probably not gonna have this thing done for five years but you know just had to have the beads I guess but I do feel like 
there is potential to, I think I might bead as I go on this one instead of doing all the stitching and then beading because it kind of bugs me how the middle doesn't show up super great because I need the light colors of the beads to like offset this deep dark purple. And so truly I think it's just me being really anxious just to get those beads on there and see what it looks like. So anyway, I got my bead pack from European Cross Stitch. It was, it was wonderful service, no issues at all. And um, so this is one I'm gonna have to pick up again. I haven't stitched on it in over a month, but that's pretty typical for, for me. <laughs> um, and then I only got one other little piece of haul. Um, so backstory for this one, there is a new Facebook group called Bewitched Stitches. Um, and it is catering to um, stitchers who have a darker sense of humor, interest in darker things, witches, horror. Um, I mean, it's really pretty broad. I personally hate scary movies, but like I was still totally into this group and like felt like I belong, even though... I'm not into horror, so it's just like a darker side of stitching. People who like Halloween stitching, people who like a little bit of like the dark twisty stuff, um, you should definitely come join the group. So anyway, for March, they're doing an Edgar Allan Poe stitch along and it's the hashtag is EAP Macabre and that is spelled M-A-C-A-B-R-E. And so basically, you know, it's a really casual, relaxed, like not a lot of rules, but um, kind of like a Poe-inspired stitch along. And so I was like, well, um, you know, there's a few like things on Etsy I've kind of favorited. I haven't quite pulled the trigger on, but kind of batting around. One of them was a pattern by the Primitive Hair, but turns out she's on vacation for Nashville Market on her Etsy shop. So... I kept looking and I finally just settled on a pattern called Raven Moon Nevermore. And the designer is, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I've been saying it in my head, Kanikis, but I've also heard people say Kanikis. It's K-A-N-I-K-I-S. So it's Kanikis Prims and Whims. And this is a black and white photo. It's not a great photo. But here's what the pattern looks like. I'll try to like really get in there so you can see it. And I know this is black and white, but the actual stitching is just on like a really dirty coffee stained linen. And most of the stitching is black, dark gray, like in tone. So um, anyway, that's what I bought so I could join along in the sow. I haven't started it yet. Uh, but I will soon. Um, but that was my only purchase. One Etsy pattern and then my bead pack from European Cross Stitch. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm sticking to my budget. I'm keeping, you know, keeping it, I'm keeping it under control. I'm doing good. Um, so what else do we have? So now I guess we're, we're on to whips. Again, guys, this is going to be short because, you know, I don't have a, a ton going on. So um, the first thing I worked on after my last video was the Armada Designs class schedule sal. So let's talk about this a little bit because people have some thoughts about this sal. So this is the Harry Potter sal that's going to feature all of the different classes that would be offered at Hogwarts. Um, when it was announced, everybody was like, Yay, awesome, amazing, me included, ran and bought it. The title, the header frame for it was super cool. So everybody was, again, really excited. And then January's block came out and people were kind of like, hmm, like maybe expecting a little more. This The design was just a little simple. Um, I went ahead and stitched the January block as is. I did not mind it at all. Here's what it looked like. Transfiguration. And the only change I made was I put whiskers on my cat. 
but otherwise I kept it as is but you can see like there's some empty space it's a little um it's just a little it is a little simple so okay so whatever I stitched it and then February came out which was potions and I was like oh no I I can't it, it just I don't even think I have a picture of it it was just very simple a ton of open space in the block and um, just not a lot to the design and I've been a little hesitant to say anything because I don't want to like discourage the designer or the hard work that she is doing um, and I'm going to continue the sal I know Abby Top Knot Stitcher was like, I'm done, I'm out. Like, we need to be honest about this design. It's not very good. I don't know that I'm there yet. Um, but anyway, someone said, hey, there's a Facebook group for this sal and people on the Facebook group are posting alternative charts at, that they're designing. And I was like, oh, I gotta go check that out. So I did. Let me find uh so I went and looked and there were um, two or three like really cool patterns. I decided to go with one that was designed by a lady named Sarah Etten. I just want to give her the credit because she designed this um, block and then posted it, posted the pattern for all of us to use if we'd like, which is super amazing of her. So thank you, Sarah. If you ever watch this, you're awesome. Um, I, I took her, I took her design. So this is what I stitched after my last video. And I think it turned out pretty good. Look at that, cute, right? So that's where we're at. Now, March just came out and I do like her design for March. It is a little bit simple again, but I like it, it's sort of like Transfiguration, it was a little simple, but I was okay with it. Potions was just too simple for me. So um, I think I will stitch March as she charted, unless someone in the Facebook group designed something like just way too tempting and beautiful and like, and I can't help myself and I have to stitch that. So I am gonna wait probably another week or two to work on this to kind of see if anybody comes up with anything like that I would regret not stitching but otherwise I'm gonna stitch March as charted. And I'm gonna keep up with this and I'm hoping that I'm happy with the blocks that are coming out each month and I'm hoping that if there's a month that I'm not happy with, that somebody is gonna do all the hard work and design an awesome chart that I can steal. But it's not really stealing because they're giving them to us for free um, out of the goodness of their heart. So. Anyway, um, I just think, you know what, I want one more look at this because it's awesome. Still obsessed with my fabric. Love it. So I worked on that and then I started my soda stitch. I told you guys about this in my last video. Um, it's Fairy Tale Land 2. And I only, I bought the, I, I will eventually do the whole pattern, but I bought it for Beauty and the Beast. I wanted to just kind of cut this and do um, a present for my sister. Her birthday's in April. And so that's what I was working on. I stitched this on 32 count witch helt lamb's wool. That's that really, really stiff linen. But, um... I got it all stitched up, but I didn't do the back stitch yet. And it already is just so darling, but when I back stitch it, it's really gonna come alive. And I worked on this for a good week. Like I just, I basically worked, started this and didn't stop until I had the whole thing done. Um, but need to do the back stitch. You see this kind of empty space? This is where the writing goes for, where it says beauty and the beast. So it won't look so empty once I do that, once I add that. But like the colors are just so bright and fun and cute. Like how cute guys. Look 
look I just want to like take a little picture with it um it's adorable I can't wait to add the back stitching but after working on that for a week straight I just I needed a break so I will come back to it to do the back stitching I do want to talk a little bit about the soda stitch charts I got mine from Trish Trisha at three owl threads on her Facebook group amazing service I said that last time I got it in like two days it was wonderful I do want to complain a little bit about the soda stitch charts and this is not Trisha's fault um their charts so this is the front and this is the back nothing to see here right the chart is just and I have to be careful because there is a pattern here look at this it's just a big fold out and then the reverse side which I can't show because it's a pattern is this so this is a four page pattern you guys it's a total pain in the neck look how big this thing is this doesn't fit on my stand that I put my patterns on and it doesn't like fit in your lap either so it, it's a total pain and people were like oh make a photocopy and I'm like but it's in color it, it's a color pattern and some of the symbols are the same like there is a star that's on a blue background and then there's a star that's on an orange background and if I make a black and white copy can I make that distinction so <sighs> it's not a deal breaker the patterns are cute and amazing I'll probably buy more but I just want to kind of I just want to cry a little bit about it I just want to bitch a little bit about it it's a stupid pattern I don't like it that it comes that way why can't it just be four pages like that just open like a book you know why does it have to, I don't get it I don't get it guys however it's adorable I cannot wait to stitch this like as a whole piece look at this so cute um I love Cinderella's evil stepsisters look at those cute let me show you guys one more time because it's so cute I'm really proud cute so next video hopefully I'll show you that with some back stitching and then completed um, framed somehow and then I um okay so worked on that for like a week I was just like oh my god I gotta do something else what now so uh had like a hundred things I should be stitching or I could be stitching so I just kind of like came in my craft area and kind of just grabbed the first thing that called to me and what that thing was, was Little House Needleworks Early American Series. Now, I am doing this on 32 count, picture this plus relic. And I am changing almost all of the colors um, from charted because I didn't have them and I wanted to save money. So I just substituted them with other classic color works, gentle arts, and weeks of like colors I did have that were the same, like a green for a green, a brown for a brown. I'm not making any crazy conversions. I'm just using, I'm working with what I have. So I had showed you guys, I had already finished Betsy Ross. So that was um, a previous finish there. And so I moved on to the next block and I started John Hancock. And I didn't get terribly far but I got a little bit done. So he has the start of a body, some of his border. I absolutely love it on this fabric. I just, I love the way the colors are turning out. I love the kind of dirty aged look. I love Relic. I, I have always loved this fabric. Let me show you what um, the completed pattern looks like. John is gonna so this is a nice one because it's I mean that roof is gonna take a hot minute but otherwise it's pretty um kind of open so it shouldn't be too bad shouldn't be too bad to stitch you know Betsy had this big old house and that took a minute there but John's just gonna have that roof so just worked on that for maybe two days um, because I, I decided I was like just really itching to like get to all of my stuff, 
You know, there's not enough hours in the day. You guys know that. You stitch, you could stitch for four hours and hardly make any progress on something. And you're, you know, there's 30 other things you want to make progress on. So I was kind of thinking I might do, um, like try to work on two projects at night, like kind of do a little bit of like a mania for a, a week and just really try to like tackle some things just so I can get that like itch out that I just want to work, stitch all the things. I want to work on all the things. Hi, Christine, stitch all the things. Oh, oh my God, you guys. Kitty. Oh my God, my kitty. I'm so sorry. I hope nobody like puked during that. Oh, kitty, settle down. I'm having issues with storage on my phone, so I cannot pause this or like redo it. I don't. Let me make sure it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. I can't redo it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have enough storage. So anyway. I'm gonna try to like work on a lot of projects, get a lot done, okay? That's the plan. Sorry, cat's getting crazy again. She's hungry. We're almost done. Okay, the last thing I worked on, and it's kind of a joke, I only got a couple stitches in it. It's uh, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Happily Ever After Sal. Um, here's what it looks like, completed. And I had everything done but two blocks on the bottom. And, uh, my Jane Austen Facebook Sal is doing Pride and Prejudice as of March 1st. And this block on the bottom is Lizzie and Mr. Darcy. So, perfect time to work on this. And I'm so close to finishing this whole thing. But, and again, I only got a couple stitches. It's kind of a joke. So that middle block there. <laughs> Just got a little bit on there. Here's the whole thing a little bit. Most of the whole thing, it's in a Q-snap and I don't feel like taking it out. It's probably not even worth showing, but there you go. And again, working on that because it's Pride and Prejudice Month. So there you go. That's what it's going to look like. I'm going to stitch on that some more tonight. Um, probably, probably work on that until I get that block done. And then I don't know if I'll move on to this very last block I have to do, which is King Arthur. I might be so motivated, like so close to a finish, I'm just gonna do it. I might just stitch this for a couple days till I get it all done. Um, otherwise, I'll do the Lizzie and Darcy block, and then I, I haven't decided what I'm going to move on to next. There's so much out there, so much I could do. Lincoln would like to say hello. Hi. Um. So many projects to start. You know what I'm gonna do next, I think, is that Edgar Allan Poe stitch along. I wanna get, I wanna join in on that with everybody. So that's probably what I'll show you next time, but I don't know if you guys have figured out yet. I say things like that and then I don't do them. Um, you know, what's that I myself am stitched together with, I can't remember how the saying goes, something in good intentions. like. That's how I feel. I'm like, yep, I'm going to work on this and this. And then the next day I'm like, no, I want to work on this. And you know, this is a hobby that we do for fun. Most of us, I assume. And so I want to keep it fun. I don't ever want to be like, oh, I got to work on this project because I said I would, but I really don't want to. Like, I'm not playing that game. If I don't want to work on it, I'm not. I'm going to grab something else that I do want to work on, right? So we will see what inspires me and what I grab, and what I work on next. So that's all I've got for today. I'm really sorry that I dropped you guys in the middle of my video. I hope you guys are okay. No bruises. Um, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye.